I'm receiving it on today. Saints of God, you receive what God has given you on today. He spoke in your ears. And what he spoke, you better stand on it. Because he is going to do a new thing. <laughs> Shall you not know it? Shall you not know it? Hallelujah. It shall spring forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Cassie. Yes. Exceedingly. Oh, yes. Abundantly. Oh, yes. Love of all. If you know the words, you can help me sing. According to Hallelujah. His power.
right now. It's gonna point. Point that spot right there. Oh, the Hubbard. Oh, the Hubbard. See, that's what happens. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. That's what happens when you allow God to peel you open, to open you up. That is love. That's love. You allow God to use him, to peel him open, to spread out what was in his heart, what God gave him. And if you missed out on that, I'm gonna pray that somewhere along the day you get a recording of this and you see how God used that man on today. That was love pouring out of his soul and his spirit for God's people. And how fitting, how awesome of a God we serve that I would sit there and watch him move while God's moving in him. And it ties into what I want to talk about today because that was love. That was an urgency in his spirit. And when God pushes you like that, you have, there's no question, you have to move. You have no choice. And that's why we're here, so God can use us. We don't push back on God. Be seated, be seated, please, please, be seated. You don't push back on God. When God pushes you, that's where you go. That's where you go. And I'm gonna open up in a quick word of prayer. All I can say is, God, I thank you. You allowed me to stand here yet again in this sacred place. Your manservant, oh God. God, I don't know who this word is for on today, but God, I pray that you allow your Holy Spirit to lay on their souls, oh God. Whoever it may be, well, this is the word from heaven, a word from God. It is not my own. It is not me. It is you who do the work, oh God. You are the carpenter. I am simply your tool. Use me at your discretion, oh God. Put me back in the tool box for another day. God, if I'm a hammer, let me hammer. God, if I'm a saw, let me cut. It says your word is sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord. But God, but when it cuts, it opens us up. And that which is in us has to pour out, God. And God, the love of God is where we want to be. We want to be in your will. We want your word to rest, rule, and abide in us, through us, around us, oh God. Let us share it, oh God, with those who are in need, oh God. This world is starving, it is dying slowly, but ever so surely, oh God. But God, you are the light of the world. Light brings life. And God, I thank you for the life you have given me, not only me, but every soul that sits in this house on today. Those who are watching afar fall off, God, be a blessing to their households, oh God. Touch them, God. Meet them where they are. Show them yourself, oh God. Show themselves. Manifest yourself to them, oh God. They may see the light, the love that you have for them. God, I thank you. I give you all the praise. I give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together. Seal it with a praise. I'm going to start off with something that um, Bishop always has told me, and I'm sure he's told many others. I'm not special, but he said, hey, you know, uh, at night, sometimes we land up, and God will give you a thought. It'll come from nowhere, and that's good to have a notepad close by. Yes. I keep one by the bed. I keep one in my car. Because you never know when God may give you something. You may see something or see somebody. They may say something. A person may not even be saved. They don't even know what they're speaking. They could be prophetic and don't even know it. But there's something God wants you to hear so you can use it. You don't know when. You don't know where. But it's going to be used for somebody. You can help. And that's what God is. He's our, he's our helper. He's our comforter. And he'll get to you one way or the other. And I wrote this to myself. I believe it was based off the theme that we have. And uh, it was, I believe Bishop was preaching because it was the beginning of the year and Bishop was doing most of the, for the actual thing. And I was sitting there and I was writing things down as he spoke. And I was, and I was this is for me. 
but you can put your name in there too. It says, Paul, you have to be the restorer of the breach. You're the one who knows me. Think about it. You are the one who has been called. You are the one who has been saved all these years. You are going down in Jesus' name. You are the be light of the world. So he said, you are the one that knows me. You're the one that has a relationship with me. You know my expectations. I have prepared you for such a time as this. You have to know that this and believe this for yourself. You have to believe. This is a one-on-one -on -one occasion yes, yes. between us and God. Yes. Yeah, there's a group. Yeah, we all get to heaven. Yeah, we're praising his name, but individually, uh, individually, yeah. the individual is part of the group. So you have to remember that. Believe it for yourself. Don't give up. As the song said, don't give up on God. Ah, look at that. I wrote this months, two, three months ago at least. I just stick it in my Bible, and I say, well, one day it'll, it'll come to fruition, and I'll have a use for it. God works like that. I said, don't be afraid. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We leave and forsake ourselves. God is always there. We're the ones that give up. We don't want to lose hope, forget our true place and where we belong. So that is a little thing I just want to share with you. Think about it. And to the children out there, as Elder Herbert was praying for you, remember, this is a prayer for you. Believe Psalms 24, is it? 27? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength in my life. So whom shall I be afraid? Speak that to yourselves. When the wicked and my enemies come before me, they stumble and fail. Remember that. Just those few verses. When you come against something, I'm talking to the youth. When you come against something, the adults as well. But for the youth, especially in this day, there are so many things that you have access to that we never thought of. We thought we would have cast me out back in the 80s when we were coming up. And I'm sure Bishop thought the same when he came up. But look at the progression of things. Look how things are changing. I remember my mother, she would see a woman on a commercial in a bra, she would lose her mind. My God, they're gonna be naked before you know it. <laughs> she was Kojic, so she was, oh boy. <laughs> but look, look what we see on TV now. She wasn't lying. I'm like one step above rated X, or below it rather. Before you know it, who knows what we'll be seeing on day-to-day -day commercials. But thank God for God. You know, that's all I can say about that situation. But we have to understand that. And as I go, I'm going to start off here. And if you haven't already figured it out, this is going to be about love. All right? And I'll get to the topic. But there's a few things I want to say before, the, before we get to that, the actual uh, title of what we're speaking on today. Love is a fleeting word in today's world. It's, it's tossed to and fro. It's like a tennis match, back and forth. And, you know, use it sparingly. We use it like it's an everyday word just to be tossed around. But we forget the importance of the word. We treat it as if it's just something to say. You know, do you want to do half the people in this world, and I'll say world, do you even know what it means to a person when you say that? Do you understand the gravity of that word? The implications of using that word? Do they realize responsibility, Elder Hubbard, that comes along with that word? It's responsibility that comes along with love. It's not just something you throw out there and say, okay, yeah, you know, you happy now? No, no. It's responsibilities that are attached to that word. The effect it has on the recipient is overlooked. It's a word that cannot be played with. And men, we can speak of this, and some women too. When we're in the world, oh yeah, yeah, baby, I love you, yeah, I love you, just to get what we want. But do you know the mental state of that woman that you're talking to? Do you really know what she's been through? She's been looking, yearning, desiring love for so long. She's been stepped on and set aside and treated like a piece of dirt or a piece of rag or whatever you want to say. The lowest thing you can think of. Who knows what she's been through, the experiences that she's had. And here you come along, your jazzed up self, thinking you all that. 
And your mind is like, hey, I know what my, I know what I want to get. So, you know, she's fine. She's available. And this is what's going to happen. And we talk to her like she's the best thing that ever happened to us. But in the back of our minds, no, nah, it's just, she's missed right now. But the implications, the implications of saying that to a woman that's in that state, a woman that's been broken, a woman who's been, like I said, just treated as if she's less than a woman. Men, we can be some dirty dogs, man. It's the truth of it all. We can be. A lot of times we are. It's the truth of the matter. I'm not special. I ain't set aside from that group. Been there, done that. Regret it. Because once God comes into your life, you look back on all those things you did. And you're like, man, do I want somebody to treat me that way? Some of us get away with it and never have to experience the short end of things. But then God will show you not so. Some of us lucky we get away with it, but some way you can get your comeuppance, believe that. But then when the shoe's on the other foot, we can't deal with that. Because there's somebody out there for everybody. Somebody for everybody out there to love. There's somebody for everybody out there to get you. And God would have it. You survive that experience. Because a lot of our sisters haven't. They're broken women. They can never trust again. And if they do attempt to trust, it's so hard, then what creeps in is no trust. Because how can I trust you to walk out that door and not treat me or respect me for who I am? And then they get, what was this? Insecure. Insecurity creeps in. That's what I wanted to say. Now you have a person that's sitting at home. She can't even think on her job. She can't even think about taking care of your house. She can't take care of your kids properly because her mind is so wrapped up in your ignorant behind and what you're doing and what you're not doing. Now you come home, why is she all over me? Lord, why are you taking me this way? I haven't even got to the message yet, but God, why are you, why are you treating me this way? I'm coming home, I'm out doing this. Well, what do you expect, Einstein? What do you expect? You out there doing more dirt than a dump truck. What you expect? You're so smart, can't you figure that out? She's at home, bearing children, taking care of your home, making sure that your needs are met, or she's trying to at least, because your ignorant self is out here running the streets like road runner, kicking up dirt, not caring about what, what your responsibilities are. You, you, you reap what you sow, man. You reap what you sow. See, that's when you get cut right there. You reap what you sow. So, you know, you know, oh God, but people have died, hearts have been broken, minds have been fractured, just what we just said. Souls have been pierced from the ill use of that word. Even wars have been started because of love. Wars have been started. Think about the city of Troy. That city was destroyed. Somebody had underlying reasons, but the main reason that war started because a man had love for another man's wife took her back to the city of Troy, war broke out. See, he loved his wife too. <laughs> and he wasn't about to let you take her and no repercussions would, would resulting from that. So that whole city was buried, destroyed. They thought it was a myth, but I think five years ago they found it. They found the walls of the city. See, you can, see they thought their walls were so high they could hide behind their mess. You know, so we'll always recommend that. That's what that represents. You're trying to hide behind your mess. But no, see, just like Jericho, the walls come tumbling down <laughs> real quickly when things are done right, but when God enters into the place. So love has to be nurtured, just like a baby, even just like a plant in your house. You have to water it. You have to attend to it. You have to make sure it's fed properly. Same thing in love. Love has to be fed. It has to be treated correctly, used correctly, in order for it to grow. If love doesn't grow, you stay stagnated. Or what else? It goes away. So you have to be focused on that. Yes, some people make it hard to love them. 
Yes, they do. And you want to say, man, I'm time out for you. I don't have no time for this. I'm trying my best to be a friend. I'm trying my best to be a husband or a wife to you. You just don't get it. What is your problem? And sometimes you got to just say, you know what? This is what I say. Some people say, see you later. I say, love you later. All right? I didn't say I didn't love you. I just say, I'll love you later. As I see you later. Because right now, I can't deal with you, man. Woman, brother, sister, no matter who it is. Child, go to your room. I'll deal with you later. You can't put up with you. Yes, some people do. Just like the prodigal son. When he left, caught up in himself, got puffed up. I want mine. But the word said he came to himself. What does that tell you? He had to come to himself. That means he wasn't right in his mind. You can get so caught up in yourself, so caught up in your mess, everything that you're doing, and you're in a fog walking around thinking everything is all right. But in reality, you walk around in a fog, a stench, because you're so caught up. Everybody looks at you and sees what you're doing, but you're so caught up in what you are and what you're doing, you don't realize that you're the one that's messed up. So he had to come to himself. But then again, his father loved him. When he came home, he treated him as if he had never left. Threw his robe on, put his ring on his finger again, put him back to where he belonged. Boy, we'd be so lucky if we can be placed back where we belong after we've messed up, after we've got so puffed up in ourselves, forgotten about who we're supposed to be, who we belong to. We are heirs to the one and only great king. We are his children. We have an airship. So why are we giving ourselves over to lasciviousness, to mess, to garbage, to sin, to fornication, to everything that is opposite of God? Why are we so arrogant, so self-ruling? You know, we're above everybody else. We're highbrow, as they say. We're all beneath God. But that's man. That's our fault. That's the fault that's within us. Lucky for us, there's a truer love that stands above all the rest. And that is the love of God. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world, they gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is, these are the scriptures we're going to pull from, what well, I'm going to use today to get our point across. Romans 8 and 38, 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, no creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. John 11 and 50 says, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Yeah. Romans 5 and 8, but God commandeth his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He died for us. One man nailed to a cross. I can see my mind as the nails are driven into his hands. It's like they say, thank you, can I have another? That's the spirit God had to have. Okay, you nail one hand, okay, nail the other one. And every blow of that hammer, it wasn't one strike and they were done, they had to hammer through his flesh, through bone, and every blow of that hammer represented the amount, the heaviness, the weight of the sins of the world that he had to take on as he cried out in agony. And then to the left hand and to the right hand and how they stacked his feet. Oh my God, your feet are so sensitive to the slightest pinch. And they're driving these rusty 10 inch long nails at least through his feet. And every blow, every nerve in his body just quaked and shook. I can see his eyes just about to explode through pain shooting through his body. But he took it just so that you could live and I could live. 
The topic of this word today is for the love of God. And I would say below that, somebody loved me to death. I know we say I love you to life, but no, in his case, he loved us to death, till death and through death. Love, oh, let me back up because I can't just let that go. Somebody loved me to death so I could be redeemed. You could be redeemed. You could be justified. You could be sanctified. You could be baptized. Your sins washed away. Liberty has been placed in your life, in your hands. Freedom has been given unto you. What will you do with that freedom? That freedom to love, to love the God who sacrificed his life for you. Are you willing to give in to God? Love is the strongest emotion, in my opinion. It can compel you to do good. It can compel you to do evil. Some people can do good and thinking is right, but it's not. Some people can do evil and it looks good, but it's not. But at the same time, you can love a person so much, they can have you do crazy things. We know people like this. I love that girl so much, man. Oh, man, I kill a whole room full of people. And some people have done that just because they were afraid that the woman was going to be taken away from them. And some people have done evil and dirty things to people because of love. For the love of money. For the love of things. For the love of self. That's even more dangerous. When unchecked, it can make you, it can make you good look evil. I remember of a movie that came out, some of you should know it, it's called Beloved. Oprah Winfrey was starred in it and Danny Glover was in it as well. You remember that movie, right? This woman here, now some people say it's good or, or she did it out of love, but because she did not want her baby to be taken, she killed her baby right in front of the slave master. Scared him to death that a woman would do something like that. Years passed by. She's being haunted by the spirit of this child, apparently. And by this time, Denny Glover's in her life. This is post-slavery, so still horse and buggy, right out of slavery. They don't have a lot. And they're living together. He has a son. And he's trying to figure out, what is your problem? What is going on with you, man? This, this is starting to scare me up in here. What is, what's going on? And she told him the story. How she cut her baby, took his life because she didn't want that baby to fall into their hands. And Danny Glover looked at her. The look on his face is not funny, but the way he looked at her when she said that, he said, your love is too strong. <laughs> your love is too strong. <laughs> and the next minute you saw, he had his hobo stick with his bag on the back, with his clothes, him and his son. They was talking about taxi, <laughs> out of here. <laughs> They was gone, man. Your love is, you do that? Uh, this mind saying, what are you going to do to me when I'm sleeping? But that goes to show you what love, how strong love, when a person is pushed, that woman was abused. She was in slavery. She had been treated, beaten badly. And the only thing she could hold on to was like, if, you, if I can't have them, nobody's going to have my baby. That's so extreme, but that shows you how much love can play in your decision making. But, mm. so, having said that, in Romans 14, it says, let not your good be evil spoken of. We have to be wise and concerted how we apply our love to people. You can't do it with ill will, ill intent. When you use that word, or when you demonstrate the love you have for a person, you have to be sincere for the power that's behind that word and what's expected once that word is spoken. If you're not willing to step in all in on it, don't use it. I know we say, oh, yeah, man, I love to eat there. I love to do this. But I'm talking about from one person to a next, to the next person. That's the love I'm talking about. But the love of Christ towards us, that agape love, the unconditional love, the highest form of love of God, for God for man and for man for God. Yes. We have what they call filial love. Yes. Yes. That's one love from one person to the next, what we call brotherly love. I love Bishop, I love Marcus. We men, we can say that, but we know what it means. I love Curtis, I love Deacon, I love him, Larry, he's my brother. That's what we're talking about. But that's a healthy love. 
because that means that we love each other in a godly way. But glory to God, even in our sins, in our iniquity, God loved us. In our faults, in our shortcomings, making the shortness, making it to the mark on a daily, daily basis, God loved us. He showed us some of the most unconditional love a person could ever even think of showing, love that we are incapable of. Even those who hated him, he loved them regardless. He showed love to each and every person he came across. But he gave that true love, that agape love, the love that we strive to share with one another. So he still shows his love towards us today. Even then, up to and through the cross, his love is everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting, just as he is. And we have to understand that, that we are special creatures to God. He loves us. We have to understand the love that God has for us. God loves us so much he gave his only begotten son. Yes, 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 yes. Are you willing to give your only begotten son? If you are only parent, well, only child that you have, are you prepared to give that child away for somebody else that they may live? Can anybody in this room raise their hand and say, I would do that? Mothers look at me like I'm crazy, like I don't think so. I shoot my husband, you can have him. <laughs> but they're not about to give up their baby. That's their love. It's a connection. So God, love, his love is universal. Universal love. Just like in the garden, since Adam and Eve had sin creep in, in order for them to live, a sacrifice had to be made. Just like for us to live, a sacrifice had to be made. And that was Christ Jesus on the cross. The blood that ran down that cross was his seal that, hey, my blood, I was shed for you. I'm speaking for myself with my own words here. My blood is the atonement for all your sins. Can you imagine standing there watching him as he faded out when he said, it is finished, it is done? All the pain, all the suffering that he took on just so we could be here today? I could look you in your face right here and tell you that God loves you because I know he loves me. Think about all the times when you could have been taken out of here, the times you could have been mistreated. Even if you were mistreated, where are you today? Where are you sitting right now? You are sitting in the presence of God. God showed up in this house on today. A man moved on today because God held him to move, ushered him to move in his spirit to let you know that God loves you. And he moves on those that he loves. John 15 and 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And my companion scripture with that would be John 15 and 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. Friends, for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. So God says, we're not only his children, we're his friends. Yes. He's friends. That means a close connection to you. Yes. He doesn't have to share anything with anybody. Yes. But he chose to because we are special in his eyes. Mark 12, 30 through 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, excuse me, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Matthew 24 is due to iniquity, love will wax cold. And that's the world we're living in now. Love has been fading, fading, like an Alka-Seltzer in water, fading, and fading and fading. Mm -hmm. Minister Jason mentioned it today. What, 10 people killed? 13 now killed? Senselessly because somebody didn't like the way somebody else looked? Some deep-seated evil in his heart? Yeah. So I'm going to go where I can find those people I don't like, and I'm going to film it while I do it. Yeah. How arrogant and how bold and how pre-planned can you be to take a soul that doesn't even know you and take him out of this world? And if you look at the, all the mass shootings that happened in the last few days, 
that happened on what Saturday? It was one that happened on Friday in Milwaukee. Yeah. It was two or three that happened on one that happened on the twelfth. Three different ones that happened on the eleventh. Yeah. They skip a day. Then there's another two or three that happened on the day before that. So people are losing their minds. There's no love in this world. Well, it still is, but it's, it's fading. You know, I just want to talk to you today, get you to think. You need to hear these words. You need to understand where we are in this world right now. Love is taking off. It's leaving us. But the love of God still remains. In 2 Timothy 3 and 15, loving themselves, boastful, is as proud, heady, high-minded. If that's not the world we're living in today, I don't know. Everybody walks around, they want to FaceTime themselves. They want to FaceTime every incident that's going on around them. They want to look at me. You got TikTok videos. You got this and that. You got Snapchat, this, that, blah, blah. Whatever you think, they're doing it just so they can show who they are. This is who I am. Look at me. Look at me make a fool out of myself. Look at me making a fool out of myself. Look at me making a fool out of myself. Lord. But think of this. Look how special you are to God. Think about it. How do you make pottery? Somebody asked him. You make it with your hands, right? Clay sculptures, how do you make them? with your hands. You mean kids, how do we make snowballs? We made them with our hands. Go back to Genesis. When the world was created, God spoke everything into existence. Amen? But share, let me share Genesis 2 and 7 with you. If you have it, you can turn to it real quick. To show you just how much God loves you. And it says, and the Lord God formed man. God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God formed man. Look up the word formed. That is to shape something. So God spoke things into existence, but he formed you with his own hands. That's how special you are to God. He took time to put his hands down into the dirt, the dust of the earth, to form a man in his image. He could have spoke it, let there be man. And the God's thoughts are known in his words. Man will pop up and there's a pop out of the dirt. Now go do what I tell you to do. But no, God formed man with his own hands. When it says form, that's an action word. You have to take something and do something with it to get an end result. So God uses his own blessed holy hands to make you. That's how important you are to God. That's how much God loves you. And if you don't believe me, read this next scripture for me. Psalms 139, 13 and 14. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my, mom, my mother's womb. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When they said fearfully, God wasn't afraid to make man. God, that shows you how important and how detailed God had to be when he made you. That's what fearfully comes from. He wanted everything to be perfect in you. He took his time. Every inch, every centimeter of your body, every hair in your head, your eyes to your ears, to the inner workings of your body, to your feet, to your toes, to the, the tone, the texture of your skin. God shaped you and molded you with his own hands. So we owe God a debt of gratitude that we could never pay. We could never pay. Because God made you. He didn't speak it. He made you. He took the time. I'm going to put my hands into this. Everything else I can speak. But this, I'm going to make this. I'm going to design this because it has to be made after me. Nothing else in the world in the creation is formed in relationship to God but us. He said, let us make man in our image. In our image, God said this. 
So we have to be special creatures for the one true living and loving God to place his hands into the soil and shape and mold us, and later to die for his own creation. Sounds backwards. I know in Hollywood, they saw these movies about people sacrificing themselves to God. So I always listen to these little fantasy fake movies. But God got it right. God said, I'll show you how it's supposed to be done. I'm going to sacrifice myself for my creation. I'm going to flip the script because there's no love there when you're dying for some fake false God. But when God comes in, it's like we spoke today about Abraham. God, they say, why did he listen to Abraham? Why did Abraham listen to him? Because he discussed, no other gods were talking. But when God talks to you, when you hear an audible voice talking to you, you got to listen. Because I tell you, when God shows up, you have to move. That's it. God said, get thee out of that country and your country, go. Nobody else ever said that. But something's got to be behind this. If I'm hearing this and say, go, and the Spirit of God is moving, you have to react. Just like my brother did today. The Spirit of God moved on him. He had to move. He had to get D up from behind that organ and come up here and say what God put on his mind. Get out of your country, Curtis. Come from behind that organ and say what God's put on your heart. And that's what he did. So we have to move because God loves us. He moved. He moved on to the cross to sacrifice himself for you, me, and everybody else. So why can we can't move for him in that same manner? Reciprocate that love back to the one true living God. They just brought you into this world. Sounds like it was backwards, but hey, God did it right. Remember, we are his friends. Because of his love for us, we owe him a debt of gratitude. We owe him the reciprocation of the love shown to us. We owe him the practice of living holy. It says, I am holy, be ye holy. I don't know what people can get up and say, I'm not, Bishop said it. There are people preaching, I'm not going to preach holiness. Well, it says it right here. I am holy, be ye holy. If God said it, they said don't add nothing or take nothing from the word. So here it, is, here it is. So aren't you taking it from the word? It's no different than the slave Bible. They took out a selection of, of scriptures to mold the mind, to shape the mind. Now aren't you doing the same thing when you take excerpts out of the Bible that are important? This is one of the most important ones. Be ye holy. Like Bishop said, what are we doing? Why are we Pentecostals? Isn't that part of who we are? Isn't that what we're supposed to do, Elder? Aren't we? So we're not going to live holy. We might as well go out to the strip club now. Let's go out to some decadent thing out in the desert and party with those knuckleheads. Why not? If you're not going to be holy. He told told Moses... Take off your shoes, man. You're standing on holy ground. So where God is, it's holy. It's sanctified. So when we walk, we walk in Christ Jesus. So where we step, it's holy ground. We have to know that, who we are. We are holy people. We're not somebody out in the street. No, we are holy people and not the holes in your jeans neither. We're talking about holy people in your heart, your soul, your spirit. You have the spirit of God in you. So we have to move as such, as people of God. Godliness should never, should never be forgotten. It should be our way of life. First Timothy 6 and 6 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So you have to be content with the godliness that is in you. Because that is a great gain. Greatest gain ever. You have to have the contentment to know who you are. Be who you are in Christ. Don't let anybody tell you who you're not. Because God told you who you are. You are his. My people who are called by my name. Right there says it. Humble themselves and pray. And seek my face. And turn from the wicked ways. My God. What else? What else? What else is there? But to live by the word of God. It says, show me a man who doesn't love God, and I'll show you the most lost soul on the planet. Show our love to him as he has shown it to us, because the gain, the prize, would be worth it in the end. 
pressing towards the mark, the prize of the high calling in God, in Christ Jesus, in Philippians. Remember, there's a calling on your life. There's a calling in your life. There's a prize. There's a mark you have to make. It's not going to be easy sometimes. We got to press. That's what they say, pressing. It's a press because people have forgotten about who God is. They've let things creep in, let things affect, forget the love that God has for them. And they're lost. They walk around stumbling in the dark. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here, and I'm going to leave this with a couple more things here. I just want to tell you, bookends. Think about bookends. They support books. Right? I started this. We start every word of God that we preach from this pulpit with a scripture. And my thing is to always end it with a scripture. Those are my bookends. The word of God on the beginning, the word of God on the end. Because if you take down one bookend on either side, what happens? We fall down. So you have to allow the word of God to be your bookends, support you, to keep you up, to keep you from falling to the left, swaying to the right. You have to understand that the word of God is what's going to sustain you. The word of God is what's going to heal you. The word of God is what's going to keep you in perfect peace, whose mind stayed on him. Him is his word. Keep your mind stayed on God. For God loves you. He loves you so much. He gave his only begotten son. We can't say it enough. That alone should shut it down. You have to be bookend. And everything in between is you. God supports you on the left. He supports you on the right. Just like Moses sitting on the stone as he would watch the battle. His hands up to God. And he had to be solid. He had to be stable. Because every time he dropped his hands, you know the position he was in. Praising God while the battle was going on. But when he dropped, they began to lose. Just like you. You lose one of your bookends, you began to lose. If you lose them both, you're lost. But thank God for God. Thank God for God. Because all you had to do is open your mouth. Say, God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. God, I'm not even worth the time of day. I'm not even worth your time, God, but God, please show mercy on me. Forgive me for what I have done, for my shortcomings, oh God, for not studying the word like I should, oh God, for not being there, oh God, for not listening to you, God. God talks to us all the time. That's why I pray, God, open up my spiritual ears, open up my spiritual eyes, oh God, open up my heart, because it's a daily battle in this world we're living in. God will... God has to be in your life. That's as simple as I can put it. You have to allow God to move in your life. You have to open up yourself. Open up your heart. God is standing there waiting. You have to invite him in. He's ready. He's in the starting position. He's ready. He's waiting on you to open the door. He's not going to run through it. He's going to walk through it. But you have to open it. You have to open up yourself to God. And I'm going to end this with the scripture, as I said. And this, to me, speaking for myself, if you say it rightfully, if you say it slow, and if you really listen to what's being said, to me, it's the most beautiful set of scriptures in the Bible. One of the most, I'll put it that way, depending on what you believe. But for me, you know, I read it over and over again. And if you, the compassion that is in these words that I'm about to speak, let them resonate in your heart. Think about it. Think about it. It says charity, but charity is love. It's the same word. They use charity in the Bible. They say charity suffereth long and is kind. It envieth not. Amen. It envieth not. It vaunteth not itself. Say, it is not puffed up like we are as men. It says, do not behave yourself unseemly. Amen? It also says, it seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Think of no evil. Say, rejoiceth 
not in iniquity, it rejoiceth in the truth. It says, it beareth all things. It beareth all things. Sometimes you have to bear it in order to get through it. It believeth all things. It believeth. You believe your children when they tell you a story, don't you? No, they wouldn't lie to me. They know better. I get them when they're sleeping. It hopeth all things, sister. It hopeth all things. And it endureth all things. Love has to endure. As parents, you know what I'm talking about. Your kids will drive you crazy. I'm going to testify to that myself. I had to step back from my daughter because some things I don't agree with. And I'm not going to let you drive me crazy or my household crazy. Put my wife in that mix. You're not going to drive my household crazy. It's hard, but I stepped away for two years and some change. You work it out. You work it out. And the end to that is love faileth not. Love faileth not. So, never faileth is exact words. So, if you have said, God, I have forgotten how much you love me. God, I have not shown love to my fellow man. God, I have not shown love even to myself. God, I need you to restore my love because God is the only one that can do it. We can't do it ourselves. We're going to miss something. But if you want a thorough changing, a thorough cleansing of what you did do, what you didn't do, whatever I was done in, in error, this is a time where you can come up. We have our ministers, our elders that will pray for you. This is when you can come up and say, Lord, forgive me for not loving you first the way I should. Not loving myself not loving my wife, not loving my husband, not loving my children, oh God. God, for not loving my neighbor, which is the greatest commandment, he said. Love that neighbor as you love that self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means we're not above. He's not a respectable person, respectable persons. Our neighbor is just as important, that unsaved neighbor that you don't even think is worthy of your prayers. That's the person you have to love regardless. Don't turn your back on them. God didn't turn his back on you. You're still standing here. You've been healed. You've been saved. You've been delivered. God has turned your life around, pulled you out of that situation. Why can't you give them the same love and that respect that God has given you? That same compassion. The word says God move with compassion on the people. You call yourself saved. You call yourself a child of God. You move with compassion. You move with some love in your heart. God is not done. God came into this house on today. God touched somebody's soul. I don't know who this word is for today. That's not my business. My business is to say what God gave me to say. Somebody here, it could be one person, it could be two. I don't know. Once again, it's not my business. My business is to say what word, the word that God gave me to share with you. Because it's his. Everything comes from heaven. If it's coming from you, there's a problem. But it comes from God, grab hold of it. I don't care if it doesn't hit you today, it doesn't hit you right now. I hope and pray that it's marinated in your heart, you has received it, you pray on it, you think on it, and God will visit you in that hour when you need him. And you will remember the words that were spoken on today, and you will apply them and do what God has called us to do. Love one another. Give him all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory that he deserves because that's showing love unto God. And I thank you. I thank you for your time. I thank you for the love that you've shown. Greater Christ Temple. I thank the man of God. I thank everybody in their attendance in the respectful places. In Jesus' name, I thank you. And I give him all the honor, all the praise, all the glory. And may God love you. Amen.